as a black mm-hmm. person, but the pushback is coming from the community. Mm-hmm. From, yeah, from the white community. The white community. The white, community. white, mm-hmm. the white community. Look, you never really hear that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you never really hear that term, the white community. But they're absolutely yeah. pushing back um, on oh. area. And so it's saying that um, Disney cast black asterisk actress sparks anger among some. Earlier this week, Disney announced the casting of Halle Bailey, and I thought it was mm-hmm. Halle Berry. Just I did maybe. too. Yeah, um, a lot of people did. Yeah, that's what I, did too. I was like, "What? That ain't Halle?" Right. Yeah, like Halle, you you still got it where you can do the little. <laughs> she <laughs> does. Black but don't crack, not... really, for real. Black don't wow. crack. And so, um, but yeah, Halle Bailey. Um, she's part of a musical duo, Chloe and Halle. Um, it says some rejoiced and others had a problem with it. And then what I found interesting was some of the Twitter comments. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. had, you know, they, they was like, they, they actually did the whole hashtag, not yeah. my Ariel. Yeah. Um, the Little Mermaid was written. This is one of the uh, Twitter comments. The Little Mermaid was written as white, was a white film. It's based in Denmark and it's based on a European female, I mean, fairy tale, but it's cast black. How is this not racist and cultural appropriation? This white people saying this. Right. This is racist and cultural appropriation. If it's if it's well, they a, flip it quick, don't yeah, that's what they say. They positive in. giving yeah. any life to this. They don't want to give away their positive images. They don't want um black people sh- being lead roles. You know how much blacks had to fight to be the lead in a Disney movie. Yeah. I think they just did that in the two thousands yeah, so, with the little frog princes. That was the first yeah, yeah, black. Right. Yeah, Princess Tiana. Yeah. That was the first one. Yeah, he in two thousand two. It was 10? no two thousand nine. So See it says, it says like um, this was yeah, like you read the script. <laughs> <laughs> so it says white people are complaining. This was one of the people on Twitter who defended um who who were defending the the move by Disney. Yeah. They said white people uh complaining. They cast a black girl as Ariel. Disney created forty nine films right. from nineteen thirty seven <laughs> right. to two thousand nine before delivering their first black princess with what? Tiana. Um, so some of us have children that watch these movies. What? Right? Yes. Black girls watched the entire catalog and never saw themselves mm-hmm. for 70 years. Right. Right. But now y'all complaining. And it's going to make uh, two. Yeah. Maybe maybe three at the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as the, the full-length films. Right, and right. Like I say, um, you know, some people don't want to let go, man. They want to keep that, that racist... That racist idea that blacks can't be lead actors, lead roles, lead films, lead cartoon characters. Mm -hmm, You know, and it's a real thing. Oh, yeah. Hats off to the director for looking at her talent and saying Mm -hmm. she was the most talented one. And this is going to be the first live action. Right. Because the the frog 70 year turn to what? Maybe 90 years? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, because that's what, what, 10, plus 10, 10, 10, yeah, so, ten years. So yeah, eighty years. Eighty yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So now yeah. eighty years is the first black lead role in a well, Disney well, film. Well, was that Disney who did Cinderella? Remember Cinderella with um yeah, with Brandy? Was that a full? Was that a full? No, I think that was. That was I think it was just made for TV. Made for TV. That wasn't. If it didn't go to the big screen, it don't count into that number of forty nine films they talking about. Okay, if it don't go. Oh, so, so, so the there's television, then that's that don't count. that's where it stays. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, and then that's all I have for the really? national news because I saw that post <laughs> um, on on the I think it was on the Breakfast Club page about the young man uh, in the hospital robe walking out of the hospital. Oh yeah, what See, was that's that? That's why, about? We, that's why we put it on the page. So yeah, so it was a, it was a black man. He was in the hospital being treated, I think, for pneumonia and asthma. You saw it, Doctor Bob. I see y'all. Yeah, just taking a walk. Taking a walk. It's fine to take a walk. You know. No, not not. No, not while black. Not while black. You can't walk while black. <laughs> right. Put but, that IV down. But now there's a demand for um, the hospital equipment to really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I guess yeah, he was taking a walk. Um, him and his partner walking while black, mm-hmm. and um, apparently he was harassed and stopped by the by the police because you know they alleged that he was still in the hospital equipment. Mm-hmm. 
but okay. it's still connected to but it was connected right yeah yes yeah, so it was still connected so he got the iv drip the stuff right. going through his veins mm-hmm. but they saying that he's trying to steal this equipment um and I think they ended up arresting him. They put handcuffs on him and everything. They like yes. really like came for him. And so just as a as a programming note too, we had <laughs> we had to um, restart the broadcast because the first broadcast was being interrupted. And so we restarted it. So we got a new live. So if you can go to the, the um, most recent live and share that video so that our friends and family can can check in with us on that one. And come back. Um, because the first one actually ended because of internet interruptions. So, um, but we back, we up, and uh, we should be interruption free. And I see we got Miss Lottie on. We got David Jackson, and we got Carla Bristol just tuned in. Carla yep, Bristol, I'm watching. on. You I'm on. on. I'm you, on and I'm all, on. You all the way up. You all. all you on up. and on. You on and on yeah. to the break of dawn, mm-hmm. right? Oh, I uh, had one thing I wanted to talk about. What's that? The what? presidential July Fourth celebration mm. at the Lincoln Memorial. Okay. And I just want to know, like a short straw poll, who ha- who watched it? I did not. I, I, I did not. I, I did not watch it. Okay, okay. Uh, I was just checking. I wanted to see yeah. if I was the only one that did not watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you're not the only one. No, he's in his head. And, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the news organizations, you know, should find more things to report. <laughs> I mm. think, you know, one of those times when you just, okay, say he did it and bop. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel As me? Y'all, to, like, y'all making a huge they deal. They make a big deal and they all want to. No, don't nobody want to see that. Yeah, and they were saying that um, it was protest associated with it because you know he was doing the tanks in the streets and right. you know the whole. Too much. Yeah, yeah, he was he was classic, you know, forty five, mm-hmm. just doing too much, and uh, yeah, they said they had tanks in the streets and like the soldiers. He was trying to do like the. Um, you know, North Korean and the Chinese mm-hmm. military, right. but they wouldn't let them. They wouldn't let them approach it from the French. They yeah. wouldn't let them. They wouldn't let them drive right. down the road because it would destroy the concrete. Oh, okay. right. Because the infrastructure, yeah. so, yeah. so right. the infrastructure bad, it would destroy the road. So that's right. why they came in and kind of like, like dropped them on. Right. Yeah, listen. And and one of the things that 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 that, that we got to realize, you know, the millions of dollars that was spent in that celebration right. could have fixed those roads, right? Yes. right. And, or, right. Or, or or help some and so many some, other some veterans. veterans. Yeah. Absolutely, you could have yeah. came yeah. down yeah. and said, look, we got an extra yeah. sixty million dollars for vets or whatever it costs. I don't know if it costs sixty million, y'all. Yeah, do not fact check me. But look, it do cost. It costs like it costs like a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand to crank that jet up. So yeah. if they had right. five jets, you do the math. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So, right. It was an expensive celebration. Yes, it was expensive. Right. Yeah, and for what? And for what? An earthquake. Earthquake. Yeah. Seven point one. Yeah, yeah. Where was five. That no, yeah. Green California. Thousand California. Thousand yeah. Tremors California. After that. Yeah, and they say it's a twenty percent chance. That that's the precursors to something bigger. Mm-hmm. So when the when the five hit, they was like, "Hey, y'all get ready because the five means it's gonna be another one that come." So okay. now the seven point one then came, and they like, "Hey, it's a twenty, it's a twenty to one chance that that might be a precursor to something bigger." So this mm-hmm. earth, so the earthquake intensity is is increasing, and yeah. so what what it's what you say about the, the climate? About. What about the climate change people who say like you know? Earthquakes are part of climate change. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think that's what they were saying. That's all. No. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Earthquakes are on a fault line under the earth. Now you sound like um. <laughs> 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 I, I'm just saying. I know a little something about Educate us. Yeah. Educate us. Yeah. It's a fault it's line. True. And then so mm-hmm. that fault line goes from California all the way to say um, Puerto Rico or, or um, one of the other countries. It's a bunch I, of them. It's and they of balls, were yeah. having earthquakes a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And see, our media didn't report it. So that was the sign. Because that was coming up the right. fault, which which is concerning because we are spending so much time um, reporting on people's parties, uh, parties <laughs> that we're not <laughs> talking yeah. about really yeah. what's happening yeah. in our yeah. community. Yeah. Yeah. We can't hear. Our no, we can hear you. you okay. We can. You just if you project because you got like that doctor's voice, <laughs> that therapist. Right, like, right. Like, 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 like we laying like, on the couch. Like, like we on the couch. Uh, and yeah. Wake up with Doctor Ladonna Butler this morning or go to sleep tonight. The climate change is real, and so is gentrification. We're back up. Step away from the mic. Was that in the mic? No, that was good. That was that's that's absolutely the truth. And so we we're here 
July is National Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, National Minority Mental Mental Health Awareness Month was established in 20 uh, well, 2008 to start the process of improving access to mental health treatment and services to those who are underrepresented. Mm -hmm. As we know, mental health does not discriminate based on race, color, gender, <laughs> identity, and every year millions of Americans face the reality of living with the mental health condition. But background and identity can make access to mental health treatment more difficult. And so to really lift that up, uh, we have brought in someone who we always shout out when we talk about mental health and trauma, um, Dr. LaDonna Butler, to talk about it. And also Mrs. Karen uh, Davis Pritchett to talk about her work and what she does in the community around mental health. But, um, yeah, let's jump right in man. let's talk about it. Mental health. Why people why we don't talk about this in our community? Hmm. You know, I think that's where the myth is. We talk about it, but we talk about it in our homes. We talk about it on the park. We talk about it with our boys. We talk about it with our hairdressers. But we have not yet found a collective to be able to speak okay. about our own mental health. And that's really what this um, summit is supposed to be, mm -hmm. an opportunity for us to not just have quiet conversations about mental well-being, right. but as a community say we know it's here and it affects us all so let's do something about it um so the theme healing while black actually um came from a intimate conversation much like you and brother jabbar have right yeah. all the time right all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, where yeah. we were just a bunch of clinicians we were having a conversation about the latest interventions that were coming out mm -hmm. and where we would spend our investments to send for training and as we talked about it, I said, but is this really going to fit the people that we say we want to serve? Yeah. Um, and she, we all laughed and say, it'll fit, but we're going to have to make it work for us. Yeah. And yeah, I said, yeah. so why are we investing in other people's solutions instead of really listening to what our culture has already given us and bringing back what is so beautiful about being black? Yeah. And so we say, well, what is healing? What about healing while black? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we often talk about driving while black. We talk about walking while black. But yeah. what about healing what about while black? What about healing while black? Right. Yeah. Good and the, yeah. and it, it, the fact that we can't find individuals who look like us to help us work through our own problems or even to be able to talk about how the stress of having anxiety or depression is only compounded by living in black skin. Right. Um, being able to have those conversations is so important. So right. healing while black is the summit theme where we're bringing, bringing about local voices to talk about what do we do to take care of ourselves. So the invitation for Brother Jabbar and Brother John is, and Sister Carla to come out and talk about how do they promote well-being by having open and conscious conversations through the studio. Um, up until bringing our brother from Philly, um, Kempis Gonic Singster, Songster, who spent 30 years in prison, mm. um, who will now come and talk about the Ubuntu Project, um, bringing together those who have caused harm by those who have been harmed and sharing wow. his story. Mm. Um, then bringing Dr. Marva Lewis back to our community, um, where she's talking about racial acceptance and rejection um, by our moments with our very small children mm. and how colorism impacts the way that we even love on our babies and right. so those are our highlights but um, when i think about the folks who are flying in mm -hmm. um just to talk about their process of healing and and the work that they do to bring about black um black greatness <laughs> yes, yes um i get excited and so and i want to uh, uh talk to really ask doctor and i say doctors look all these doctors <laughs> uh, mrs pritchard about yeah. about the work that you yeah. do because i, I really mm -hmm. what impact do you think that grief oh, kind of yeah. plays into this whole process of mental health and, and the yes. need to heal while black absolutely it's it's huge and a lot of times when we start talking about grief it's uncomfortable because we're talking about loss mm -hmm. And so a lot of times when we think about loss, we immediately think about, oh, someone dying. But we experience loss a lot. If a child is leaving a school because they need to move mm. and the loss of their friends, the loss of feeling that they've been connected to their school community, what does that loss look like? Right. Loss of job and economic empowerment. So we grieve in several different ways based on several different types of losses. Mm. Um, so the work that I was doing and am doing has to do with our Healing Hearts Camp and some that I'm really passionate about because our kids are hurting. Mm. And as adults, we sometimes get really caught up in what we're doing and how we're feeling. And we sometimes forget mm. 
to touch back and ask our kids, how are you feeling? How is this impacting you? So with the Healing Hearts Camp, it really is an opportunity for our kids in a safe environment to talk about how am I feeling because I lost grandma? How am I feeling because my pet died? And one of the things I'll never forget with the very first um, Healing Hearts Camp that I did, which was phenomenal because I worked with some of my colleagues from Suncoast Hospice and we were able to do these camps because of the generosity of um, our Women's Giving Network. Mm -hmm. But I met this little girl she's a third grader and so we're talking about loss and how you're feeling and how do you cope with that and she said to me she said miss karen i have a lock box deep deep down in my stomach and i said so tell me a little bit about that and she said i only open it when i want to stuff something in there wow and i said what are the kind of things you're stuffing in there she said anger sadness and i thought wow i have this third grader trying to figure out how to cope Mm -hmm. with loss and she's created this image of this box that she's stuffing and I said to her I said well can you make a promise to me today I said can you get your key and go down to that box and take out one thing that we can work on today and she looked at me and she kind of went and I said it's okay and she said I'm going to take out anger today wow and so that entire day we talked about her, how do, why are you angry? What does that look like? How do you express that? And then said to her, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to feel angry because right. you have experienced loss and you've experienced something that's traumatic. So those are the kinds of things that if this little girl had not come to that grief camp that day, she may not have had the opportunity to really express mm-hmm. And so that's the kind of work that I'm interested in doing and want to do for our kids in our community. I grew up in Child's Park. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yes, C-P-A-D, CP. Park. <laughs> um, and just really went to Howard University, have a master's degree in counseling psychology. My own struggles with grief. A um, couple years ago, lost my cousins, India Welch, Lamore Welch, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Takira, in an accident. But since that time, also had 10 other family members pass away. Mm -hmm. And so as an adult, you know, we plan the funeral, we do the repast, who's going to bring the sodas, who's going to sing the solo. Mm -hmm. And then on Monday morning, we go back to work. Yeah. And we stuff it all down and we're like, we're okay. Yeah. And we're not. Yeah. And so how does that manifest in our everyday life? How does that manifest on our job as we're interacting and interfacing with each other? And where can we build those places to talk about grief in a very bold, in a very transparent way? And, and then when you said that, it made me think about when we say stuffing it in the lockbox, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the we, we have the understanding that the mind also can make the body sick. Yes. And so just mm-hmm. thinking about, you know, concentrating on that area. Mm-hmm. You know how how later on in life we start yep. developing yep. ailments. Yes. You know people Absolutely. can't find out what they come what they come from. Right. You know it's because we pushing it somewhere, and then the body says, "Okay, well I'm holding this thing." Yes. And then it starts to you know cut up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yes. yes, it does. Yeah. It manifests in lots. Am of I on to something, Doctor Butler? You heard a little bit about that. I heard a little bit about uh, that. They, they call them somatics or something like <laughs> <Yes>. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say if I re- uh, of our viewers wanted to check out anything, it would be uh, one of the um, TED Talks by Nadine Burke Harris, where she talks okay. about adverse childhood experiences, talks exactly about that. Wow. The impact of adversity earliest in childhood and how it shows up in, later on in health conditions. Mm. This was one of the largest studies. 17,000 policyholders um, were looked at. And when I say policyholders, they were mostly white folks who had access to health care. Okay. And, okay. Even, yeah, <laughs> and, even, right. and even right. them, they came up with some ACEs. And what they found was there was correlations in high ACEs. Scores, ACEs, adverse, adverse childhood, childhood experience. Okay, gotcha. And their negative app. Ad- um, negative health outcomes like cancer, mm. diabetes, um, even some of the behavioral outcomes like depression, right. um, suicide, uh, suicidology. So all of those things were related. The mm. second and that last thing I'll show you is the Body Keep Score. That's a book. The Body Keep Score. Yeah, and that okay. yeah. that talks yeah, yeah. about the impact of trauma on the body. So you know, since we got some well-read viewers, yeah, um, oh, we want yeah. you to right. check out those two it? resources. <laughs> um, but. At the summit, we're bringing someone um, who's going to really deconstruct the Philadelphia study. Okay. um, Because Philadelphia is a little bit more urban. (laughs) 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 And they added to the ACEs. They said that um, 
children or between the zero, zero and 18 that were exposed to discrimination mm. were also showing those same adverse health outcomes, just like they were exposed to a parent who had untreated mental illness. So, I mean, uh, the, so our health is connected to ra- racism. Race, <laughs> racism is a factor. It's a factor. It's right. Racism, mm-hmm. not race, race but race, racism race, racism yeah. is a factor. Dang, so, so just being black in America uh, is, is causing us to die. It's adversely. literally making us heart sick. attacks and cancer. Yes. And mm-hmm. all that. I want to thank y'all first. <laughs> I want to thank y'all <laughs> because it's not often that we have this kind of expertise, mm-hmm. you know, to talk about these type of problems. Because as we're dealing with trauma in our community, mm-hmm. last you must have been very traumatic yeah. in St. Yes. Petersburg. Yeah. And it's been a lot of different issues and a lot of different community stuff that is making it to the community mm-hmm. forum, mm-hmm. Facebook and the social media. Right. And it's traumatizing it us is. all mm-hmm. in some yeah. way. Yes. And I think it's a great thing that y'all what y'all are doing, the expo should be good mm-hmm. i hope we can make it and, and like what, and what what also like what um mrs pritchett was saying about you know loss mm-hmm. you, you think about that individually but what about a community when right. we talk Absolutely. about the 85 acres of right. tropicana field yes. and you yes. got a whole community that's been demolished right you, yeah you know and what impact does that have on the psyche of, of the community mm-hmm. and on the health of the community and so that that really right because you know it manifests in so kind of so many ways just like you said physically mm-hmm. mentally you know you have people saying oh i have an ulcer or mm-hmm. i don't want to eat mm-hmm. or yeah. you know i can't sleep mm-hmm. i have insomnia all of those those are factors based on you're not dealing with your loss right. in a productive way. Right. And so we've got to be able to have those conversations. I think you asked earlier, why don't we talk about it? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we want to make sure that, and like I have my, my shirt on strong. now that says strong. We mm-hmm. want to say that we're strong, but part of the conversation of being strong is saying, I need help. Yes. Part of being strong is saying, okay, I need to take this cape off as black women yes. And I need to put it down for a second and I need to find a space and a person that I can talk to yeah. who's going to help me figure out and navigate what it is that I'm feeling. And then once I'm able and I'm in a good space, then I can pick my cape back on mm-hmm. and then I can start helping other people. Right. But being strong and beautiful is not just about constantly helping, 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 right. but it's mm-hmm. being how am I doing? One thing that I do when I'm, I'm talking to women and, and doing women's summits I asked everybody to stop and just ask yourself and say your name. And it's, it's very powerful. Mm-hmm. What is it that Karen needs? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is it that brother John needs? Right. What is it that Carla needs and wait for it. And you're going to hear what it is that you need. And then we need to be able to act on it. Sometimes it's, you know what? I need a nap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes right, right. it's, you That's know, right. I need to forgive. Yeah. But what is it that you need and being OK with that answer and being OK with saying, all right, I'm going to seek out resources. I'm going to seek out people that can help me get that what it is that I need. Right. Right. And then the other thing, too, when we talk about seeking out resources, you know, we I mean, I don't know if I'm saying we that might be French. I've always <laughs> kind of associated, you know, the actual fact that therapy and therapists there's a cost associated to it. And so it's like, we, we say, okay, well, we can't afford to go and talk to somebody like a therapist Mm -hmm. because, you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, they, you know, they get a decent check. So are there resources in the community that are affordable? Like how affordable is this stuff? And is cost one of the factors that stops us from, from talking to people? Is that myth or is that real? And, What's your experience with that, with just people not having the ability to pay for for counseling? I think we're both going to respond to that. Yes. Um, I almost want to say and give a shout out for what um, Karen does with her work with um, the Healing Hearts Camp, that that is not a charge to families and Empath Health when they offer grief um, services without charge to, without direct charge to families. I mean, there are resources, um, and she'll talk more about it. I will say it will cost you if you don't. Yeah. So it costs more to it not costs do it. You, yeah. you can't function at work productively. Yeah. You can't contribute to your community in a way that is meaningful and fruitful. You won't be able to connect with your family in a way that allows you to experience the full range of your emotions, especially joy. Mm. So we spend more on hair and shoes than we do on our mental health. And that is the thing that we need. And so if it costs you to show up and spend some time with someone who can hear you, help organize your thoughts in a way that allows you to 
walk clearer, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that might be an investment, and I, I think it's a myth that we we can't afford it. Right, we can afford what we choose to afford. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so I think um, so. That's one thing. Right. There are services that are out there that will not um, have such a deep financial impact. However, I would say um, you also want to budget budget for the the thing that you need the most yeah, right? yeah. So most insurance covers it most insurance covers it most mm-hmm. most insurance so at the well we have a sliding scale okay um, and we have many practitioners um, who are licensed and they will work on a sliding scale fee okay we also have a host of interns those are individuals who are completing who have completed their masters and are just needing the rest of their hours that we will gift hours for those individuals um, we partner with individuals like the urban League and the Healthy Start Coalition, um, I'm sorry, Healthy Start Federal, who um, will sponsor some clinical sessions. So if individuals need help navigating, the well will help them and support them in that. I will also say invest in what's important to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So our Healing Hearts Camp, that is free, and that was through a grant. Okay. Um, So any child and we'll be um, probably doing another one in the end of August and if you're interested in that you can send me an email at contact kdp at yahoo.com so that's free at Empath Health, we have a community counseling program, which is $20 a session. Okay. And you can bring as many people as you want. It can be an individual session. It can be a family session. But we also have grants available. If you can't afford that, you can reach out to us, and um, we can figure out a way to help you get that resource. There's also, um, look at your EAP, your employment assistance programs, okay. because a lot of those have free Counseling sessions, um, I'm, I am familiar with some of them. They give you up to five a year, okay. and that's totally free. So that might be one of your benefits. That might be one of your benefits at your job that you can ask about. And I think the other thing that's really important is just like with anything else, when we shop around, you should be shopping for your therapist mm-hmm. or your counselor. Mm-hmm. Because just because you go to somebody the first time and you don't click with them and don't say, oh, this therapy isn't working for me. No, you just need to go find another clinician who may be culturally competent or makes you feel comfortable and that they can help you through that process. And if you have a good counselor, share that, you know, right. share that name with other people and talk about that because it's by word of mouth. Right. Um, so all of those are, are benefits and ways that you I, can I get that. Say, okay. I, I just want to point out that the well is a provider for Pinellas County schools okay. and that and, as their EAP provider. And that happened because one of the um, individuals who received therapy added us to the plan. And right. so now it opened up for every other school Pinellas board school. Okay. to be able to access So, so Pinellas County School employees. It's, we are an EAP provider for, for Pinellas County Schools. That's amazing. Yeah. So, we, so I got a, and I don't want to cut your communication. I want to just take this uh, question from um, social media real quick, Jabbar. Um, so one of the questions was, can you trust that if you tell, if I tell you my issue, it will stay with you and only you? Because I guess that's one of the, the challenges that we have when we go mm-hmm. to therapy. Is like mm-hmm. I'm telling you all my business. Mm-hmm. Right. Now somebody know all my business. Right. Right. So how how what kind of guarantees are that you know? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh a little bit. <laughs> so a licensed therapist is one of the uh, best investments uh, that you can have because we are bound by HIPAA and because mm-hmm. I want to keep my license and not go to jail <laughs> or pay a hefty fine. Um, right. We we are bound for confidentiality. The only two things that we cannot um, hold confidential is if you are planning to hurt yourself mm-hmm. and I can't keep your and I can't keep you safe then we have to um, make measures to to, that, yeah. I have to report that or if there is an, a, a child or a vulnerable adult um, being abused then we have to report that outside of that um, there are individuals um, who I walk past every day that see, that sit on our couch there are individuals who come in for a meeting nobody knows whether it's a clinical session or or whether we're having a, 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 a strategy meeting right, right. Um, because it's all confidential. Nobody knows our relationship. Right, yeah. right. But yeah. I think that is a big problem in, in our community, though, mm-hmm. just, you know, because right. we've been raised in a culture where, say, you don't what's the, go, go on in my house, stay in my house. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't tell people your business and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a, one of the barriers, I think, that kind of prevents us from, from mm-hmm. getting treatment, too. Yeah, uh, Shots, yeah so... What you got? I'm kind of on that same thought pattern, but it's a little different because, like I say, I know a lot of people been going through 
trauma these last mm -hmm. few months in the city, mm -hmm. right? And I know, like Brother John just said, it's it's in our nature not to go see a stranger and talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if if y'all know if anything, you know that could help some of these people. Cause I mean, like it's been shootings, it's been mm -hmm. you know multiple things. I can't even begin to list half of them. Y'all, I know y'all know about some of them. Mm -hmm. And some of these parents need help. Some of these people who just been witnessing it on Facebook needs help. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. know how could they like get to y'all? Mm -hmm. Like like really like hey, I need to talk or or my cousin need to talk. How would they go about that? Right. Well, I, I also think one of the other ways of getting to us something and, and Brother John went to this a couple years ago, looking at the community, going to the churches and we held a grief conversation. Yes. Yes. And it was amazing because it was an opportunity for people to from all over to just come and talk about what it is that they were experiencing. And we walked through those stages and had lots of conversations about that. But you can contact me. You can go, if you want to contact um, our community counseling program, you can call 467-7423, which is our main number at Empath Health, and you ask for community counseling, you can reach out to me. Um, my email address is Karen Davis at Empath, Karen Davis hyphen Pritchett at empathhealth.org. Um, you can also contact me at contactkdp at yahoo.com. I think these type of um, platforms that you all are providing where we can talk to people and get people and make those connections is really important because it is word of mouth and it is about trust. Right. And so if we can build those spaces where people say, you know what? I went to this therapist and it was okay. They didn't tell my business. Guess what? I went and I talked to this person or my child went to this grief camp and it was very successful. We've got to be able to use the grapevine in our community to yes. promote yes. and say that it's okay and remove the stigma, remove the fear and liberate people to seek mm -hmm. out help. Um, I think that's, that's really important, but absolutely please contact me so far with our grief camps. We have helped. We've had over, 320 kids wow. um, the in age, our camp. So the age range is from second grade until eighth grade. So okay. second through eighth grade is our focus for those camps. Okay. And then one other question that I had um, was just about like interventions, right? When, you know, when you see that your, your family members or somebody that you know is kind of showing signs mm -hmm. that, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to make that light need, of it, but you know you that, you need, that you need some support, you know, right. because you know in our community it's like they special, they crazy, they tripping, they like all we, the we have all of, we have all of these terms that we use mm -hmm. to define mm -hmm. mental health. They touched or whatever, mm -hmm. but once you right. identify or you think that you know somebody in your family may really need some help, what are some things that you can do, you know, or say to them to, to try and encourage them to go and have those conversations? Because most people who need that help, you you know. They like I'm go good, home. I'm fine. Right. I don't need no, but I don't need you know. I'm good. I just need to drink my bill, whatever, mm -hmm. you know that medicate, whatever method they use to cope. But what can we do to intervene and really encourage our loved ones to to get help when we think they may need it? I love that. Um, number one, it happens in families, and so if you want somebody to come and have a conversation about mental health in a family setting at a barbecue or whatever you choose to do, mm -hmm. um, you can email info at thewellforlife.org. We can schedule something for that. Okay, we've done that. So y'all just pull up. We listen <laughs> in home <laughs> in home services. So very similar to grief conversations, we had mental health conversations, especially during the month of May. There's lots of conversations right. um, that go through our community we want to sustain that um, so info at the wellforlife.org where we can send out someone to do a consultation that's what we call a family okay. or a family conversation we name it whatever the family needs us to name it okay right? okay a conversation yeah, right? yeah, yeah. whatever you need it to be named the other way is once a month um, and this goes directly to um, brother Jabbar's conversation about trauma um, the last Thursday of every single month we have a survivor speak. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the National um, Crime, Sur Crime Survivor <laughs> Chapter. <laughs> right, we're, we're a chapter. I'm so glad. Crime Carlos. Survivors for Safety <laughs> and Justice. justice right, yeah, she yeah, said yeah. right here. So we have our St. <laughs> Petersburg chapter. And so on the fourth Thursday of every single month, we have the conversation around survivorship. And so we open up with... Um, we open up with some type of relaxation or meditative process where okay. everybody is centered. Second, we have the conversation and open up the floor to be able to hear the story um, because I believe our stories are healing and being able to tell your story is therapeutic in nature, right. um, especially when held by somebody who can 
um, help organize it Mm -hmm. um, and hold space for you in a way that you feel honored and heard. Um, So the fourth Thursday, no, um, no reservation required. They walk into the well and we're there. Also, for the rest of this year and to the end of 2020, our theme is Healing While Black. Yeah. So if you go on this website, um, there will be other opportunities like the Brown Girl Brunch on Saturday. That's another place where we'll have conversations about mental health and well-being over brunch. Uh, we have our Brothers in Barbecue Although it's going, kicking off on that Saturday, it will be quarterly. So you can bring other family or friends to the barbecue so yeah. we can have a conversation about mental health. So we're finding um, strategic ways to have these conversations and just make it natural. We used to have the same kind of problem when we talked about substance use and, mm-hmm. and addiction. Now people talk about you drinking right. too much or using, using too much. We want the same thing to happen when it comes down to whether – whether we're acting well or not. No doubt, no doubt. I think something else, too, that we we underutilize our hotlines, like our suicide hotlines. Um, When I was a student at Howard University, part of my internship, I worked on the the National Suicide Hotline, well, and the Warm Line, which was for postpartum depression. Mm. And we had lots of people calling in, especially teenagers, Mm -hmm. because they wanted somebody to talk to and they didn't want someone to know um, you know what they were dealing with but it was a safe place for them to call and talk to someone talk through and they would call in to us all the time mm-hmm. to the point where they start asking for specific um, <laughs> you know people you know last <laughs> night I talked to Miss K that was me that was my name right. um, <laughs> and so can you get her on the line so I think we underutilize that service too and you always can call 211 yes and they can patch you through to those various um, hotlines. Okay. Um, the other thing, too, that I'm really excited about, I'm going to be launching in August and September, I'm calling Crossroad Conversations, mm-hmm. which is going to be centered around being strong and beautiful and what does that look like and how as we as women can support each other while we're also taking care of ourselves and what are those issues that we've stuffed down Mm -hmm. that's not allowing us to walk in our purpose and are not allowing us to walk into the fullness authentic person that we were created to be so really excited about that as well awesome awesome and so we have the the summit coming up the i see you said here's a featuring healing spaces there's breakout sessions for consumers and community members survivors and clergy lay leaders um, what's a textured conversation? Yes, at the <laughs> I think somebody um, alluded to it. Often our hairstylists are the first individuals, other than our clergy, right, who will hear something's not right, right? Okay, um, hairstylists. Hairstylists. And yeah, so yeah, at yeah. Divine Textures Hair Studio, we have um, the pleasure of having Maureen Joseph come from New Orleans, Louisiana, who will lead us through a conversation about how do we as women take care of ourselves. Mm. Um, and then the prominent position of cosmetologist, uh, cosmetologist and stylist um, in mental health. And so this is new. Yeah. I'm excited about oh, it. Um, yeah, because people talk to they they stylish. They now. do. Yes. They <laughs> right. do. So I mean, I know many. And the stylists guys, talk to everybody too, though. So he's talking, do, right? <laughs> and be careful when you talk. Careful what you say, right? <laughs> right? But with the stylists, what we want to do is um, arm them with the information so they can re- so they can support individuals calling two one one, getting them connected, um, maybe offering the right words, picking up on signs. Um, that that person might be in some serious trouble right um and being able to provide some support so that's our a part of the overall cam- campaign but textured conversations is going to be uh, it's going to be a textured conversation it's, it's going to be lit it's going to be lit i know what you want president john we have a question what tools um can loved ones get to assist someone with getting help um, so what, some of the strategies that um, we discussed before was the use of our, our hotlines, like 211, mm-hmm. um, which will direct them to the appropriate line, um, directly contacting the community counseling at Empath Health um, by reaching out to KDP um, or at 727-467-7423. Or reaching out to info at thewellforlife.org where we can schedule a consultation. Also, the power of 
the power of the Google machine is something else, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And so ask we, <laughs> right, ask Google about, you know, looking up symptoms and looking up ways to support. I believe the number one way is to hear someone. Just, yes. just be present. Um, yeah. That's the best gift that we can give anybody and allow them to share what's going on. And then aligning with them and supporting them and making the best decision for themselves. So, All right. Mm -hmm. So we got three minutes left. Um, if you could maybe just give us another round of how we can, if people wanted to contact you, they wanted to participate in the program that you have sure. to offer. Um, you can, my email address is contactkdp at yahoo.com. Or you can also call Empath Health, which is 467-7423, ask for community counseling. Um, and also, we will be having our Healing Hearts Camp coming up really soon in August and September. It will be posted on Facebook, and I'll make sure that I link it. Okay. to these pages absolutely mm -hmm. dr butler how can we register for the, the uh, summit okay so it's www.nationalminoritymentalhealthsummit.com so you just go in there and register for any of the events if you want additional information um go to info at the well for life org or you can leave a message at 727-251-0743 all right final thoughts y'all shout out to soprano Thank y'all so much. Like I say, this is very much needed. Um, very timely, right on time. Um, like I say, the community going through a lot, and y'all are in need. Y'all services are very much needed, and thank y'all for the work y'all already have done. Thank you. All right, the one and only Carla B. Final thoughts. Um, just that this is so relevant. It's so timely. Um, even in the program I'm doing, we ended up having some deep conversations last week, simply because one of our instructors, uh, Elizabeth Sipling. Um, stop the entire dialogue to focus on what she was hearing, mm -hmm. which was dealing with um, some of the grief. Mm -hmm. And we have such a high rate of suicide with yeah. our young people today. Yes. So us yes. being able to, as adults, provide opportunities for our young people to share is so critical and not shut them down or say, you know, be quiet, mm -hmm. like let mm -hmm. them talk, listen, mm -hmm. and find mm -hmm. ways to help. All right. So, yeah, I also would like to just echo that. Thank you all for what you do. Thank you for the work that's being done. Uh, anytime we can lift it up, uh, we're going to absolutely do our best. Uh, we're participating with the Minority um, Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, so on the next episode, we're going to have Nayira Muhammad. Yes. She's going to come in and talk about the work that she's doing yeah. and the event that she's having. Yes. And, uh, yeah, so I just want to say thank you all. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this has been the Tampa Bay Breakfast Club. I'm your brother, John. This is the one and only Carla B. I'm your boy, Charlotte Soprano. And we out. Y'all have a good day. Start your week off right. And fade to that. And stop. All right. Good stuff, y'all. Great show. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.